All right, so we were uh, working through the layers, and the last thing we did was kind of refine this horizon line. And the next thing we need to do is add in our coral tower. We have guides, which I can toggle on and off with command semicolon, that show me the original cropping of my sketch and kind of what I was thinking of for the scene. But I think today we're going to need to maybe add some other things too to finish it off. And I might even decide to recompose it, maybe add a little bit more sky or, or whatever, or more in the foreground, we will see. So what we're going to do now is to save some memory. Because I've moved everything in towards the center and on top of my sketch, I don't need all of this extra canvas space anymore. And you can tell from the bottom left-hand corner that one layer is 420 megabytes, this layer. But separately on all the layers and with all this extra space, the entire file is over one gigabyte, which is quite large. So what I'm going to do is use the crop tool and not crop right to the guides. I don't want to lose everything, but crop right to my images. Right, just take out all the gray. I leave my guides there to show that I can still crop more. But once you've cropped in, then hit return. And now we're working at less than a gig, which is more manageable, right? There's also probably layers I don't need anymore, like all of these smart layers. I can delete those. Because remember, those are still in references. If I needed to bring those back in, I could. But I'm pretty happy with how I've used all of those so far. I do want to keep my sketch even though it's turned off. And then I had this extra copy. And I, for the life of me, don't remember why. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. <laughs> okay. So, oh, and then I've got a little fill in there. And so I can merge certain things with selecting multiple layers with shift and then say layer merge layers. If I want to save memory that way too. Though I wouldn't get too uh, too anxious about that because it's, it's better to have multiple layers. And then it's been a while, you know, several days since I've worked on this. So remember, I also did a little patch for these guys on the beach, the only figures, and covered them up. But the truth is my coral tower is going to cover them up anyway, so I don't even need that patch. Okay, so now we have some interesting issues with my little coral tower reference. For one, we want to note the, uh, the focus on it because this is something that was really small that was photographed and the focus is right in the middle and you see how the foreground's blurry and even behind it is pretty blurry. So I have to decide what do I want to keep and what don't I? And I don't want anything behind it to be blurry because that will betray it. But I do want to keep the foreground blurry. So in order to really make that work, I think I need to change its position a little bit from where I had it in my sketch. And I can make it bigger, of course, so it, it goes into the foreground and kind of comes from a corner, like so. And now I need to do just the usual steps of kind of blending it in, the first of which is playing with its lighting, right, under levels or image adjustment levels, a direct adjustment to it. Do I want to push it a little bit brighter? Maybe a tiny bit in the midtones. Do I want to push it darker? Definitely not. But remember, I only use that middle slider, so I don't blast out the whites or the or the blacks. So I'll see, do I like that better? Yeah, that helps a little bit with this lighting, especially now that it's more in the foreground. Next, I can go to image adjustments and play with the color balance. Though this is a foreground element, it's kind of the focal point. I like that pop of color. I do want it to kind of match the environment a little bit better, so I can push a little bit of the cyan and magenta into it. In the highlights, I can try to play away from the yellow just a little bit. This is all very subtle. I like this color balance tool because it doesn't do anything too quickly. And it helps you really see your options. It's the temperature of the color. Notice how my sky is now almost matching, which will help with cutting it out.
All right. And then you can always toggle with Command Z. And so these are subtle shifts, but they're helpful. And now you see the water also, the temperature kind of matches. So now I don't need to get so perfect with all of my um, selecting and erasing. So I'm going to use a 100% eraser, very soft edged, fairly large, probably about 300 pixels. And then just start softly erasing away. And in this way, at 100%, taking away the hard edge from my rough selection of this coral tower. The uh, coral and the water are not at the same layer? No. So I have several layers for just the water. Right. And I can play them against each other in different ways, which I will, like with their opacity, things like that. And so here we have one, two, three, four, five, six layers making up this image right now. Now the main thing I want to avoid, whoops, I'm wrong, wrong layer there. If you're worried about, um, huh, let me get that on zero. There we go. If you're worried about accidentally erasing on the wrong layer, which sometimes happens, you can lock your layers as you go with these little padlocks. So if I'm happy with these background layers, and for now I am, I can always unlock them and work on them. Then that keeps me from accidentally erasing on the wrong layer. Okay, now what I need to be careful with, with my soft 100% eraser, as I'm getting rid of these hard edges, just where I, I lassoed the selection to begin with, I don't want to accidentally cut into the things I want to keep. But it is really nice that I can kind of blend this sky into what's already there. And now because I'm using my tablet and it's pressure sensitive, I can do a pretty good job cutting around this. <clears throat> and just every time I lift off, it will save it as a new history state. And I can zoom in more. Don't zoom in more than a 200%. But right now this is 100% and I might take my brush down, might make it a little bit harder, but still keep it at 100%. And just clean up around these hard edge shapes. And because they're organic, I can even create my own. Now this is a foreground element. So this is more of a focal point I show a little bit more care here than with like the background mountains cutting up. Yep. Now I can also do it with the lasso. I have one feather turned on in my settings. So that will soften it slightly, but maybe not enough. So if I take a chunk away like that, yeah. That one feather works okay. It's maybe a little sharp. I might go to two, two pixel feather. Now the benefit of the lasso, unlike using the eraser directly, is that you can add or subtract from it. Take out a big chunk, hit delete, see how it feathers. But then you'll often need to go in with your eraser. Fine tune it just a little bit in little areas. We're going to learn some other uh, adjustment tools that don't just change the whole layer or selection, but you can actually use as tools. They're called dodge and burn. And that's going to be helpful here once I've cut these out. All right, let's go for a large 0% hardness brush, get rid of that hard edge. And now I can start fading it with this sky. So 
So the way I like to do that is make my eraser really large, maybe 600 pixels, something like that. It tends to jump. You can always type it in if you need to. So I'm gonna do 600. And then because it's so soft, it kind of radiates out. And that helps. Then I can go a little smaller and then maybe even a lower opacity and blend, ah, blend these a little larger at the lower opacity. There we go. So those clouds don't drop out entirely. So the colors mix a little bit and get some atmosphere. A lot of finishing this off will be about uh, creating atmosphere. Kind of the air itself. So once you've gotten rid of those hard edges and you've cut out the, the hard edges you need to keep, then you can blend with that soft eraser. Because it just becomes kind of the mist in the air that you're working with. And it's okay if it's a lower opacity. Whoops. So you see the difference between hard edges, and soft edges. But you do want to be careful. You don't want to accidentally, like I did here, make something transparent that you don't want transparent. So I'm going to take it back to 100%. There we go. And then I can go to a lower opacity. Now at this stage, I think the most helpful uh, view setting to be in is at 100%. So you're actually seeing it real pixels. That means the pixels of your image match, match the pixels of your monitor. And that shows you what you'll see when you print it. Even though it's a lot bigger on the screen than it will be when we print it, it will show the same level of detail. Uh, another term we use for this in digital art is actual size. So we are viewing it now at actual size. And this one got a little soft from my overzealous erasing. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my lasso with my two pixel feather to erase it out. Deselect and then use that eraser at 100% opacity, very soft to soften those transitions. So no longer hard edged. And then go bigger and go lower opacity to transition them outside of the hard edge. Let's see what layer are those artifacts? this layer. So I'm seeing these little lines in the sky right there. And that's coming from my far background layer. It's interesting. So I'm just going to erase those, unlock it, and erase those as they overlap with the clouds. So you'll notice things at 100% that you wouldn't notice otherwise. Little transitions you don't want. That's a false horizon back there. I want to get rid of. It's not fun to get surprised by that stuff in the print. All right, so now moving on, I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive. Use my lasso. Start cutting this stuff out. Create some of my own sharp edges. So it's great to use organic stuff. Oh, I thought coral would be fun. 